this one is extra special. Uh, another very cool project we got to do with Nissan Motorsports. I'm going to run you through it outside here because it's kind of big. Uh, it's tough to get around and show you all of it in the shop. And also my face is swollen because I just had dental surgery. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we can still make this happen. So, without further ado, the Nissan Frontier Desert Runner. Built by us here at MA Motorsports. Do a little walk around here. Obviously, this thing has a pretty killer stance on it, thanks to all the goods underneath, which we'll get to in a bit. And the first thing you'll notice, probably, is the battleship gray color on it. This is actually a wrap, a vinyl wrap, by our friends at Speed Design Custom Graphics. They've been doing all our vinyl work, stickers, wraps on all our projects for about 20 years now. Best in the biz. Also, notice how wide this thing is, right? That is thanks to the Fiberworks TT style bedsides and front fenders, which still can't even contain the wheels and tires on this thing. Long travel suspension up front, wide axle out back. This thing is doing it. A couple trick little additions. Side exit exhaust we made. A little teardrop style. Coming right out the bedside. Color matched mirrors. We've got the arrow catch hood pins, which I do like. And a hood vent from Trackspec Motorsports. Uh, pretty trick little part. This is a universal vent, you know, but it fits this truck pretty good. Aesthetically, especially. Uh, this grill is from a Midnight Edition Frontier. You'll also notice these custom bumpers we made, tubular bumpers, we made these in-house. Nice roll bent top tube. Fits the shape of the truck pretty good. Skid plates. Lights from Rigid Industries. Big curved light bar. And we got their little pod lights here in the bumper too. This thing lights it up. Come around back, you'll see Obvious tire carrier and rear bumper combo. We use the factory Nissan Utilitrack to help hold the tire down. I have uh, Frontier myself as a daily driver, has Utilitrack in it, and it is extra handy. Yep, a couple extra cleats there you can use to tie stuff down. Probably put a jack there at some point. Notice the bed cage we built. A fire extinguisher for those just in case moments. Mount of the battery in the bed. Bed cage holds 3.5 King shocks, bypass shocks, and reservoirs are mounted right to it. Again, this thing has a pretty killer stance. 89 inches wide in the rear. 90 inches wide in the front. All right, the goods. We swapped out the factory 4 liter V6 in exchange for a 5.6 liter Nissan V8. This is a built motor, still 5.6 liters of displacement, uh, but we are using Jim Wolf cams and valve springs and retainers along with uh, a custom Jim Wolf spec piston. It's 10 and a half to 1 JE piston, so fairly high compression, but um, even though we're running this thing on 93 octane pump fuel, still works great. You know, we're running relatively low boost on it. Uh, the turbo, yep, that's right, it's turbo, is a Garrett GTX 3584RS with a 121 AR V-band hot side. 
and while that is a relatively small turbo for this engine size it's got a big AR on the exhaust and the idea was to only make about 600 wheel horsepower which this thing does no problem it only 12 and a half pounds of boost and it is very responsive makes a ton of mid-range torque all the plumbing was made in-house here at MA Motorsports. Four-inch intake pipe uses a uprev GT MAF, and it's of course controlled by an uprev modified ECU. Uh, Three-inch cold pipe, intercore pipe, kind of sneaks between the CSF radiator and custom shroud we made, and the rest of the engine. And that goes into custom intercooler we made, uses a Garrett core, and we custom made these end tanks for it. You'll see here uh, tile blow off valve, big fans of the tile product. A uh, little tripod that helps support the turbocharger, uh, factory engine harness, coils. Uh, however, the fuel system is far from factory, using a fuel lab regulator. A set of uh, fuel rails are actually from an LS engine that we modified to fit, and they hold down some Injector Dynamics 1050X fuel injectors. Um, all the fuel runs through XRP hose and fittings. Pro Plus. XRP stuff is awesome. We try and use it on everything. Uh, XRP fuel filter mounted under the truck on the frame rail. Got uh, plumbed to this radiator and a couple ports on the engine we modified. We have a coolant header tank here that we built mounted up high. Um, our experience with the VK56 engines in uh, racing applications um, has told us that these things um, stay a lot cooler when you keep the air blood out of them. And that is 100% the case. Again, plumbed with XRP hose down there. That goes down to the bottom of the radiator. Yeah, we got a oil breather tank set up there. We got two hoses, just one coming off each valve cover and then another one that pulls vacuum from the intake tube. There. Yep. Pretty cool view here through the fender well. You can see all our fab work. Kind of tight fit. Trying to fit everything in here. But that's the blow off valve recirculation and the hot pipe at the bottom there that feeds the intercooler. And that's the bottom of our intake pipe there. Yeah. Truck makes 540 wheel horsepower on our dyno. Uh, dyno jet numbers are 600 wheel horsepower. Um, 680 foot-pounds of torque tuned by Carl, our friend Carl, at Black Box Tuning. Boost control duties are handled by this giant tile V60 wastegate. Basically uses shorty headers with a y-pipe setup into the single turbo again kind of tight packaging in here so tough to see it all wastegate just dumps the atmosphere here under the truck all right inside of this thing we removed some of the creature comforts but it's got what you need to have fun still that's for sure Motec display, C125 dash logger. Let's you know the engine vitals. 
Uh, the factory gauges do still work. That information is all behind there. The boost controller is a standalone unit from Turbo Smarts eBoost 2. Something we use in a lot of our builds. They work really well. Uh, switch panel in place of the HVAC controls. Just controls the lights. A uh, little battery cutoff switch there for when it's parked. Hydraulic handbrake there for having fun. That handbrake is uh, Chris Forsberg's signature part, CF64 billet handbrake handle. Uh, just the right height. Thing's pretty awesome. Uh, handmade shift knob we built here. Just a little accent part. Uh, Sparco quick release and steering wheel. That's probably my favorite quick release. It stays super tight. And that steering wheel is super comfy as well. Holding you in are the Sparco ADV Han seats. Sparco harnesses as well. And a custom harness bar we made in house here. Got some little vertical supports, plenty of adjustment. Notice some other details while we're in here. That's the brake line plumbing and a little bit of wiring, battery cable. Not much in here. We used a bed liner product on the floor, just make it easier to clean out after a long day of having fun. Seats are mounted with sliders, also from Sparco and side brackets. So, uh, you know, anybody can get in it and enjoy the ride. Brackets we made here, nothing really off the shelf for a Frontier, as you can imagine. Checking out the suspension on this thing. So it gives it this awesome stance and makes it so capable. Uh, in the front here, we've got King 2.5 10 inch coilover and uh, King 2.5 three tube bypass shock as well. And both have the finned reservoirs, which are very trick. I'll keep that shock oil as cool as possible. Uh, those are squeezed between BTF fabrication upper control arm mount to BTF lower control arm which all link to this awesome fabricated sp spindle also by BTF. That makes up their entire long travel kit for the Frontiers and Xterras. Pretty awesome setup and the guys at BTF are super, super cool to work with. Trust me. Uh, they will take care of you. They make kits for all kinds of vehicles as well. Uh, this one is capable of 17 inches of travel if you're not limited by things like a brake booster, which we are in this application. Uh, way up there you see the brake booster. Uh, our control arm would hit it. So we set the King Hydro bump stops right here to hit uh, just before that control arm crashes into the booster up there. Uh, this nets us about 
14 inches of wheel travel up front, which still a lot of fun. Whole lot of fun. Yep. Uh, as you can see, just some details on the BTF stuff. Uh, they do include these tie rods. Uh, giant uni balls. And they're pretty good at welding, too, these guys. Yep. Pretty trick setup. Really glad we got to work with them on this project. Um, and the King Shocks, of course. Also known as a killer product and they are all linked up in there with a custom shock hoop setup that we built uh, you really can't see it because it's kind of stuffed up in there and hidden by turbos control arms shock reservoirs and everything um, but we built that pretty sturdy and it's all linked together by an engine cage basically like a like a shock tower brace as well which we'll show you Get you a different angle here. Yep, big beefy control arms. Big time. Well, you see our brake lines? We ran them uh, across the firewall over here to the upper control arm and then down the spindle. Uh, that keeps them out of harm's way. And plenty of room for articulation. This truck uses the 07 brakes from a Titan. Uh, they're a little bit smaller, so you can fit them in a 17-inch wheel. Uh, it's it's kind of a requirement, sadly. Uh, uh, but it's the only thing that fits, and they stop the truck just fine. Got some wheel clearance there between that big tire. Details on our shocks. In the back here, suspension is a lot more simple. Uh, we stuck with the leaf spring for that purpose. Keeps things uh, a little bit easier. And we also wanted to retain the factory fuel tank. So if we wanted to go to like a three link or four link, we would have to most likely remove that. So we decided to keep it. And with the help of Giant Motorsports, uh, we use their 64 inch, what they call a link killer kit. Use a 64 inch Deaver leaf pack. It's pretty burly and it nets somewhere around 19 inches of wheel travel, which is pretty damn impressive. Uh, again, giant rear axle also we got from them for this build and king 3.5 rear bump stops welded some plates on the axle spring perches welded on there giant stuff uses these nice bash plates that comes with the spring kit along with shackles and shackle brackets this kit, I believe, is normally for a Titan, and we just modified it to fit. You can see the King shock mounting here. Let me get that limit strap out of the way. But uses a 16-inch long King 3.5-inch triple tube bypass shock in the rear. Uh, plenty of room for our suspension to articulate here between the shock, frame rail, leaf, and the tire, which can be an issue. Drivetrain on this thing consists of an OEM six-speed manual transmission, which is pretty cool that these trucks even came with a manual gearbox. Uh, as far as I know, they are one of the only trucks you can still buy today with a manual transmission. Um, and it being six-speed uh, just makes it that much cooler. From what I'm told, they have similar internals to the uh, CD series gearboxes found in 350 and 370Zs. Now, I don't 
uh, know that for sure. I've never cracked one apart. This one is brand new uh, for this truck here. Inside the bell housing, we have a Jim Wolf Technologies full metal clutch kit. Um, and that is adapted to the BK56 with a Driven Desire adapter plate. Uh, the adapter plate setup is pretty cool. It comes with a little adapter that hides the crank sensor up under here, a uh, flywheel spacer, and all the hardware and everything you need, which is pretty awesome. Um, we made a custom, custom clutch line there. Um, we're, we're not using most of the sensors in the gearbox, so everything's kind of zip-tied up there. The drive shaft is a custom unit that we had our friends at the drive shaft shop make for us. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Still a two-piece shaft. Uh, and then you can see here a uh, strange third member inside of this thing. Uh, 456 gears and an ARB air locker. So we can turn the locking on and off, which is great for a truck that you might drive on the street or, um, you know, or take over varying terrains. Uh, that is mounted in this giant motorsports axle housing let me get back here show it to you uh, very nice very nice unit it's got a big truss on it uh, we had to make the truss just wide enough that we can still clamp our leaf springs on there with no problems uh, minimal work and uh, this uses a wheelwood brake kit uh, it's an off-the-shelf brake kit and one of the cool things about it at least for a street going truck is the ability to put a parking brake on it which we did here that's what these black cables are here and uh, all the brake lines we routed ourselves in house here nice and tidy uh, with plenty of slack there go up and mount to the chassis and into the cabin uh, up there you can see the air compressor for the air locker um, and that's controlled by the switch and the interior. Pretty sweet. Here's some more details of the turbo kit. Uh, again, it uses the JBA stainless shorty headers that we just uh, added some B bands to. And tight radius elbows, U bends, I should say. Redirects the exhaust up front to where the turbo is mounted. We did modify the chassis a little bit here to feed that pipe through and make room for this giant three and a half inch downpipe. Uh, in a four wheel drive truck, that's where the transfer case would be. Yeah. So underneath here, you can see the exhaust use up front. We got a flex section there. Use there. There is our collector, two to one collector. It goes up to the turbo, just barely sneaks past our steering shaft. See, that's our turbo oil drain there. XRP Pro Plus hose and fittings crimped together. Wastegate dump. Right there. That's that three and a half inch exhaust. It's almost straight through. Crosses over back here behind the gearbox. Made out of a couple pieces so it's easy to service. V band connections. We did add a Borla XR1 muffler here before it exits out of the bedside.